Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the channel. Thunder Ducky here, and um, yeah, I I didn't I didn't expect to hear this number. Um, as you probably know from the title that I'm going to title this, you already know the number that I am referring to. I knew that they put a good chunk of money into this game. I didn't know that they put in this much fucking money, but they did, and it's um very telling. So, ladies and gentlemen, before I get into this, make sure you like and comment, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification so you know whenever I put up a video or do a live stream. And let's hop into how Concord sunk four hundred or Sony sunk four hundred million into this video game. That's how much they put in a Marvel movie lately, and they fail. This game was out for two weeks. I think it was like ten days, so it wasn't even two weeks. It was four days shy of two weeks, and they had to pull it. And they quit all the sales. As a matter of fact, they went into people's PlayStation accounts and removed the game if you purchased it digitally. Four hundred million. Now I have an article I'm going to read, and then I'm going to see if I can hunt down the video where I first heard about this. <clears throat> where are we at? Uh, this is Forbes. So new report says Sony's Concord cost four hundred million to make, and this is from Paul Tassi. Who I heard is not the greatest um, journalist, so I, 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 I we're just going to read through it, I guess. Uh, it seemed obvious that Sony was going to take a huge loss on Concord, given its high cost, immediately disastrous player count, and unprecedented shutdown. But it may be even worse than everyone thought. A new report from Sacred Symbols, Colin Moriarty, who I haven't heard anything good about either, citing a source that worked on Concord, claims that the game had a higher budget than anyone envisioned, a full 400 million broken up in two halves of development. You can watch the video below, but I'll have a summary beneath that. Or maybe I'm getting Colin mixed with somebody else. Okay, there's the video. Perfect. He actually has it linked. Um, there's a tweet by Colin. I'll have that up later. Okay, so what happened? Before the game hit Alpha State, they'd already spent $200 million on it. Unclear how much from original owners slash investors and how much is from Sony. After that, from 2021 to 2024 launch, Sony spent another $200 million on it. The game was in a laughable shape when it was shown in that alpha state, so Sony felt like they needed to spend that much to get it to minimal viable product status, which is really sad if you got to spend that much to get it to minimal viable product status. A major expense was needing to outsource much of the game to other studios in Q1 2023, some aspects of the game had not been worked on at all, like onboarding and monetization. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd say this may explain the price and no battle passes more than some conscious noble decision to change the model. Also, how bad the earned cosmetics were. By the way, can we get rid of battle passes, please? I'm, I'm fucking tired of them. Ongoing cost to maintain game would be additional millions a month. Well, yeah. It's a live service, or at least that's what they wanted it to be. Concord is the biggest budget game Sony has ever released, the biggest loss they've ever taken. There are other games being worked on at Sony that cost more than this, but in terms of what's already out, this is the largest. It's a total loss. No shit. Why did it happen? Concord was said to be the future of the PlayStation. They said it was a Star Wars-like project. I didn't hear about that. There were big multimedia plans between the cinematics and inclusion in things like Amazon Secret Level, which they are planning on keeping. And then I believe Sony even came out and was selling shirts for Concord. Shirts and hats and, you know, merch. There was a culture of toxic positivity vibe where you could not say anything negative internally about the game. Character designs, etc. No one was allowed to meaningfully change the course of the game. This was, and he's got in brackets, CEO of Sony Interactive, Herman Hulse Baby. Oh, who was a massive champion of the game. Well, maybe you should get your head out of your ass, Herman. Some of this still seems so strange, budget aside, as given AAA bloat these days, I can believe that. But how do you look at a game in a laughable state in Alpha two years ago, scramble to outsource work to get it finished, and still believe it's the future of PlayStation and a potential Star Wars-like property? Star Wars comparisons are always a tall order. We heard that said about <clears throat> the goal of Bungie's Destiny back in the day, but Destiny succeeded and has lasted for 10 years. Concord lasted two weeks or less. I guess this is the toxic pos positivity, he's got it in uh, air quotes, which has been confirmed by other sources where even if that sounds ridiculous, you can't say that, especially if this was 
a game cradled by the entire head of Sony Interactive. I'd argue putting this much faith in a game that bad is almost fully disqualifying for that role. <laughs> I definitely agree with that statement. Uh, the head of Firewalk has already stepped down, and it seems close to impossible. The team survives either dissolved into other studios or shut down entirely. This is arguably the biggest video game disaster in history by financial loss, and there needs to be someone held responsible. It should not be the rank and file workers in this situation. Well, Paul, I hate to break it to you, my man, but that's just how this shit works. Oh, he's got the he's, the video actually plays in the article. Sweet. Okay, so we got a tweet from Colin Moriarty, who Paul mentioned. Um, Colin says, I spoke extensively with someone who worked on Concord, and it's so much worse than you think. It was internally referred to as the future of PlayStation with Star Wars-like potential and a dev culture of toxic positivity halted any negative feedback, making it cost $400 million. That is insane that they spent four hundred million on this fucking game and it didn't even it lasted two fucking weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a video from Colin Moriarty here in a second. It's gonna be about nine minutes, so sit back, relax. I'm gonna play the whole nine minutes because I don't want you to miss anything. But I will be back with some thoughts afterwards. So stick around, grab a snack or something. I don't know, it's it's nine minutes. Ever talk about this game again. Because <laughs> who really gives a shit? However, and I don't do journalism really anymore, as you guys know, and we talk about this a lot. I was a journalist at one time, and I used to break a lot of stories, and these days I don't really grind like that. So the stories that I break these days are usually people, or always, not usually, always people coming to me. And uh, someone who worked on Concord um, reached out to me, and I verified who this person was and went through all of that and talked to this person extensively uh, like a lot, for a long time. Ooh. And uh, got some, I think, interesting information that I can share about Concord. Um, and uh, I think people will be interested about it. The reason that I wanted to talk about it is because some of the assumptions that I had made about the game were dead wrong as far as how much it cost and how much Sony really lost on it. So the big thing that you really need to know here about this is that um, Concord costs about $400 million to me. <laughs> Oh my god! And um, <laughs> the story goes that Concord, by the time Concord was so in the first quarter of 2023, Concord had basically entered an alpha state. This was before Sony had even purchased the team, uh, but Sony had been working with um, probably Monsters and which was the original owner of Firewalk and Firewalk, um, probably since late 2020, maybe 2021 at the latest. On Concord, the game was in development before that. Up to the point that the game went into alpha state, um, they had already spent about two hundred million dollars on it, and it's unclear how much of that money is from probably monsters and the original investors into the game, and how much of that money was from Sony. Um, there's this term in in product development, uh, not only with games but really with everything. You can like manufacture a tchotchke. You guys might have heard of it. It's called minimum minimum viability or minimal minimum viable product. Mm -hmm. The idea behind this, or MVP, the the idea behind this is that this is like what you're trying to achieve, and it's like once you cross this barrier, you feel comfortable selling it. It's not that it's the best it can be, or that it's what it's going to be by the time you launch it, because there's all sorts of extra stuff you do to it. But like this is the minimum viability of the product. Um, when the game had already had $200 million spent on it and was basically in an alpha form in quarter one of 2023, from that point until the game launched, Sony spent another $200 million on it. The scuttlebutt behind the scenes at, about Concord is that the game was in a laughable shape <clears throat> um, when it was shown and ready basically like when the alpha was ready to go and they were kind of being like you know we're ready to kind of get moving towards getting this thing out in the next year or two it was in such horrible shape that sony felt like they needed to spend that much money again so you know 200 plus 200 to get the the game to to the mvp status not to the status of it being like a great game to get it to just viability and that at that time in quarter one, 2023, there was such, there was nothing done. <laughs> like 
a major expense was having to urgently outsource much of the game to other studios to finish building the game out. And that two fundamental things were not worked on at all up to the point in which the game was shown in alpha onboarding. Nothing about that. No, like there was nothing about how players get on, like how they make their character, all that kind of stuff, or, you know, choose their character and get there and monetization. Two very expensive, very specific and boutique things that happen to games like this. Um, and so that's the first thing that I wanted to say is that it's not only about the ongoing cost, which would be in the millions to keep the game going per month, but that the game cost about four hundred million dollars to make soup to nuts. Sony put most of that money in and um, it is not only so because we had kind of said like this must be Sony's biggest loss ever on a game and it is. It's the biggest game Sony's ever released from a budgetary standpoint from the first party or second party. So <laughs> let that sink in. It's crazy. And it's totally unintuitive. There are more, there are games that are in development right now at Sony first and second party that are more expensive than this. But as of the games that have come out so far, so think about like Spider-Man two and so on and so forth. We know the last of us part two cost $220 million. Spider-Man three is going to cost about $350 million. This game costs more than that. And they lost all of it because they made no money. They made about a million dollars gross revenue and then they gave it all back. So this is a huge multiple hundreds of millions of dollar loss. Now, the question is, why? Why did this happen? This game was heavily championed behind the scenes. Now, we know this because Sony ended up. What's funny is that the game is presented in this in Q1 2023 as this you know, we're kind of getting towards the end. The game is nowhere near being done. It's in a horrible position. And then Sony buys the team. The idea behind this was, and the term apparently verbatim had been used, that Concord is the future of PlayStation. That they had such major ambition for this game that it was referred to internally as a Star Wars-like project for Sony. That it can be repeatedly revisited over and over and over again, not only in cross media, but in what we were seeing, we've already kind of seen little bits of it. So the weekly story vignettes that they were going to release. And then of course the inclusion in Amazon's um, secret levels anthology, that's like just scratching the surface of it. Ironically, the game was codenamed chaos behind the scenes. And um, a major thing about the game is that, there was, and I think we can kind of get this vibe from just the nature of the people making it and kind of the way the game reads and all that, a toxic positivity vibe. You weren't allowed to say anything, apparently internally, about this game. About how, like, something's wrong with it, character designs are not right, um, and so on and so forth. They really, truly believe this was Herman Holt's baby, apparently. And he internally was, it was himself a massive champion of the game so Ooh. it's not that so the reason i'm telling you all of this it's some interesting information of course but it's that i had said when people were like concord lost 200 million dollars now people were pulling that money out because that's basically how much like some of the first party games like ghost of tsushima the last of us part two etc kind of cost in that frame and i was like there's no way that it costs that much i i was saying like it costs nine figures probably like low hundred million dollars but there's no way it costs 200 million dollars no it costs 400 million so, and I am totally solid on this source, by the way. So that's why I'm willing to share it with you. Because again, I don't, I'm not really a journalist. So yeah, the big things to take away, $400 million loss. The game was in horrible shape as of 18 months ago before release. Not even monetization, no onboarding, most content not even there. The game was in such bad shape at that point that they spent the budget of it again in urgent outsourcing to get the game finished from all of these different angles over an 18 month period. Internally, the game was considered part of the future of PlayStation with heavy cross media references and a system of toxic positivity surrounding it that, that didn't allow anyone to meaningfully change the course of the game. Because if you're, if the people at the top truly believe in something, you're, you know, you're not going to be able to do much about that. I don't think from the trenches. So I thought people would be interested in that and uh, just wanted to throw that out there that, yeah, they re Star Wars really apparently, or I'm sorry, Star Wars, Sony really saw this as a Star Wars like project for them, like the potential to, and now it makes sense 
yeah. not only why they spent so much money on it, but why they bought the team. So there are people there. And to me, it's unclear who exactly the people are. I know some of the names. I don't want to get too deep into that because a lot of the things I learned were off the record, but obviously this is on background. Um, and it's like, yeah, now it makes a little more sense. You spent, and by the way, the $400 million not included in how much it costs to buy the team. <laughs> um, so yeah, biggest, so Concord is Sony's biggest released game by budget to date. And it is the biggest loss that they've ever had as a company on a project before. So in a nutshell, they were willing to sell an unfinished product. Now we, we are pretty used to unfinished products these days when it comes to DLC. I mean, just look at call of duty <clears throat> um, with modern warfare two that came out in 2022. And then we had modern warfare three in 2023. That was basically just a DLC for call of duty. And then of course you have, um, patches and other DLCs for multiple other games. That seems to be the normal these days. It's not like an actual extension of the game most of the time. It's just a bunch of fixes and something that was in the game originally because, you know, people do deep dives on the files and stuff that's within the games and stuff to um, determine that all this stuff was originally in the game. They just kind of unlock it. It's not like the old days, you know, whenever you went and picked up a game, that was pretty much it. They might add some story content later on that you can go and purchase. But it's not like stuff that was primarily in the game already. And then you just, here you go. You know, we just press a couple buttons and there it is. Um, you know, back in the day, and I, I make this sound like I'm like 100 years old and I'm only 27. Um, we got games that were finished. You, you got handed a game and it was done. And that's what you got. And um, they might have done a couple of things with it. But, you know, as far as DLC, DLC was actually DLC. It added stuff to the game. It made it better. Most of the times when you get updates and stuff, it's Call of Duty still is the example. Something gets fucked up. A gun gets nerfed and another gun gets buffed. Or a gun that needs nerf gets buffed and then it's twice as good and then people start abusing it and that becomes the meta. And then it gets annoying for the rest of the people playing the fucking game. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the hole Sony has dug for themselves. And who knows, maybe even Amazon. We'll see how bad um, secret levels or whatever the fuck it's called is going to be. It's insane. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share the channel out with friends or family. As of the recording, this still sitting at 700. Thank every single one of you. Let's shoot for 1,000. Can we do 1,000 by the end of the year? A little crazy, but I think we can do it.